Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do a video uh, talking about the twist rate of uh, barrels. So we had someone comment on our Facebook page, uh, requested that we do a video on this and kind of explain how it works and uh, what different twist rates mean and, and how it affects uh, you know the rounds you shoot and how you shoot. So we have a couple different barrels here. I'm going to talk about your 223 5.56 caliber bullets and the twist rates that uh, come with those kind of barrels. As you know, every rifle has, or most rifles have, riflings in them you have what's called your lands and your grooves. So the lands are kind of the raised portion of the, the riflings and your grooves or the valleys in between those lands. So that is something that is going to twist the bullet as it's coming at the barrel. Just the same as a football player who throws a football, throws a little bit of uh, spin on it to stabilize that football as it travels through the air. So that's what the rifling is doing. It's going to put some twist on the bullet so when it leaves a barrel it's going to stabilize it as it flies through the air down to your target. Your most common twist rate in a, in a 223 or 556 barrel is a, like a 1 in a 7 twist. You can get them also in a 1 and eight, an 8 and a 1 and a 9. This one here is a 1 and a 9 twist, and then over here we have a 1 and a 7. So what, what that's going to do is uh, it's going to stabilize your bullet. Depending on what kind of grain of bullet you're shooting is going to dictate what kind of twist rate you want. The 1 and a 7 refers to the amount of rotations that round is making or that trajectory that projectile is making in a 7 inch portion of your barrel. So every 7 inches, the projectile will rotate 360 degrees one time. Okay, so the shorter, the smaller your twist rate, like one of the seven, the tighter your, or the quicker your revolutions are going to be on that projectile. A one and nine is going to have a little bit of a slower revolution. The higher grain of a projectile you're shooting, the the tighter of a twist rate you're going to want to shoot. So if you're shooting like a 75 grain 223 bullet you're going to want to shoot a 1 and a 7 twist. If you're shooting a sub 55 grain, like a 42, 45 grain, 223 projectile, you're going to want maybe a looser or a, a longer uh, twist rate, like a 1 and a 9. There's a table here that kind of shows you the different grains that you can shoot and the twist rates you'd want to best stabilize that bullet. Can you shoot different grains out of the twist rate that uh, it shows on this table? Yes, you can. You're just not going to get the ideal uh, stabilization of that round out of that twist rate. So you can shoot a 45 grain bullet out of a 1 to 7 twist rifle. It's just not going to stabilize, stabilize it as well as a 1 and a 9 twist would and vice versa. When trying to figure out what twist rate is best, obviously you need to decide what are you using the gun for? What are you going to be shooting? And then that's going to dictate obviously what kind of grain of bullet you need, which is going to dictate what twist rate you need on the barrel. When you're choosing your AR-15, what kind of twist rate you need to best stabilize around your shooting to get you the most and best accuracy downrange. So hopefully that explains it to you. If you guys have comments on this or further uh, insight, please let us know. Comment below and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Want to buy an AR-15, what's that going to run me? Well, it's kind of a, a loaded question. It's like asking somebody how much a car costs. It can range, you know, very significantly from a low-end AR-15 to a high-end AR-15. So. We're going to show you the differences between the two and kind of what you get when you pay a little more uh, as opposed to buying, you know, something that's uh, pretty inexpensive.